One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Welcome back, Draft Kings and Queens, to the Racial Draft Podcast. I am your host, Michael Ford, not joined by my regular co-host, Kia Lisi. Shout out to Kia, who's out there somewhere uh, doing big things. But to fill her shoes, we had to get two, two people to uh, fill in for Kia this week. We got from the Black delegation, Randy. Randy, how's it going? I'm I'm doing well. I'm feeling good and, and, and very ready to go. And from the white delegation, Gordy. So we got both sides of the racial conflict. Um, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, I can say that today was uh, I, I, I did one of the one of the, the tenants of white culture and I got myself a new dog today. Mm -hmm. so things are things are going well so so we thought about reaching out to someone british to represent the white delegation today but you know i guess i guess they were too busy indulging in hate crimes and they yeah. couldn't be um... <laughs> my, my plan my backstory and my plan for my british batman is gonna i'm gonna hold on to that for maybe a week or two until uh the fires calm down a wee bit yeah, over you, there. you 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 might want to workshop <laughs> yeah exactly his relationship to lucius fox is about to change um <laughs> but if this is your first show i apologize but we are going to do what we do every week and that is change the complexion of the comic book universe one draft pick at a time, the racial draft. We are in season three. It is a new format. There is some bidding. There was some bidding. It was a crazy week. And who better to kick off the discussion about the crazy week than the person that had the first character that acquired the first character of Bruce Wayne and spent 1,199 of their $1,200 for Bruce Wayne. Gordy, explain yourself. <laughs> yeah, see, I like it. This was my plan. I couldn't make the show last week, so you all talked about me. Then <laughs> I come this week and I get to explain myself. I'm just keeping myself in the news here because I will not be bidding on anything for a long time. Uh, listen, if you've paid attention to FCL scoring, I mean, everybody knows Batman is the ultimate. Uh, he is probably worth three... Uh, basically three any of any other character. So I decided to go all in and see if I can piece together some uh, some dollar uh, and no, well, one dollar bid and a bunch of no dollar bid characters the rest of the way. And deeper than that, uh, Bruce Wayne is old money and should be a white guy. Batman can be any anything but bruce wayne it gets a little weird if if we're talking about about you know old old money and not being uh a stodgy old british family in this particular case i mean i think that you know we've we've shown in other seasons that it, you know you could just make him kind of white ish white passing as long as he's a as long as he's the son of the wayne family they could still descend from old money yeah, but I mean, you know but he himself it's, could it's be still is still white then. I mean, I'm just saying. If he if he if we have to make him white passing or make him some kind of bastardized son of a white family baron, I mean <laughs> it is what it is. But uh a but fair that, but, point. A fair point. But that's okay. I, I'm ex I'm excited. There will be a Batman, a British Batman backstory. My plan this year, this particular season, is to be a little less uh, a little less negative. It's my first full season at the helm, and maybe highlight uh, some of the different uh, nationalities of of white culture. We'll get we'll get we'll put in some Irish characters. We'll put in I tried a Croatian character, but uh, Randy scooped up my Doctor Doom, so. <laughs> We, I we, see. So, so you're going to represent the world of whiteness. Uh, you're going you go. to you're going to uh, show the global reach 
of the white. What what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Randy, help me help me. Um, it rhymes with our. Um, it rhymes. <laughs> 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 listen, listen, all I know is all I know is in the world I live in now, you go in the mayonnaise aisle and there's like eight different kinds. It's not all just one anymore. <laughs> so, so so you started us up with mayo chup, and uh maybe next week there'll be uh mayo anch, mayo yeah, ranch, the mayo exactly. ranch mixture. We're not getting the, we're not getting the sriracha mayo, but uh but that's okay. <laughs> You know, one one will be made with olive oil and one will be made with I don't know wherever the hell they used to make mayo with in the nineties. <laughs> and uh you did mention the FCL scoring. So we we have access to the year to date FCL scoring. And uh as mentioned, Batman this so far this year has scored four hundred and ninety-three points. Yep. Um the next highest has scored uh three hundred and one. So that's crazy. Needless to I mean, say. Every... Batman comic books are like new Netflix series. Like they come out every every three days and nobody knows what happened and where they came from. So I'm I'm with it. Bruce Wayne's gonna yeah. if they if they if they if they finally go through on a DC uh universe static shock, I'm sure he's gonna wind up being a Robin. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were gonna and, say that Batman would find a way to mentor Static in uh, the ways of uh, how what what life is like in Dakota when I was a child. <laughs> Bruce will just be like, "Listen, listen, Duke needs a friend, so come on over." <laughs> well, I would be remiss of it if I did not give the perspective of the people, and this might be uh, I won't say it's completely unprecedented, but it's very rare. 100 percent approval rating for white batman including wow. 66, I didn't even vote in it 66.7 <laughs> percent strongly approve 33.3 percent somewhat approve there you have it 100 percent. everybody's on board with white batman and uh so yeah uh I mean I can't knock it until till we start seeing how these these points will, will break down up and you know it, it's a set, it's a bold strategy and i want to see i want to see how it plays out it's um, it's sort of it's sort of grim and morbid <laughs> <laughs> to to think of how like solid a strategy that is cuz i mean like it, we 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 just uh i don't know i i hate i hate always um like ragging on batman you know i sound like a broken record but well the other thing that happened is that by batman going first that mm -hmm. ended up setting the market for everyone else because i mean yeah yeah everything kind of became a percentage of well if batman goes for this amount then this character that, that, that was amount. that was literally what what the fan is what, what the fcl ended up doing mm -hmm. and it's just like you can't help but sit back and be like uh crap i mean i kind of <laughs> I, personally speaking and you know not to knock our friends at the fcl I, I i would question the methodology because you know their their teams are smaller than mm -hmm. than our teams that we that we work with so you know there's you still have to field a complete team and he's not going to be able to provide uh nine over 90 percent of your scoring uh from week to week and you win every single week i mean he's gonna yeah. help he's gonna help he, but he's, yeah but but if he's if he's the only one putting up points that could be a problem well i mean yeah but at the at the, at the same time i feel like i i think i may have even said this like in in reply to to their tweet but basically like it, it is very much in character for for us to overestimate like get an <laughs> overestimate of of his worth and his value as a character so I'm like, yeah, that, I mean, not that I would have agreed with that line of thinking, but yes, I, I absolutely feel like, yeah, in hindsight, this is, I, I should have seen that coming. Well, bringing yeah. things all the way to the other side of the spectrum, uh, we had our, uh, the first character uh, was the most expensive and our second character was the least expensive. And that was mm -hmm. Felicia Hardy, the black cat. Who, who's five dollars that's how much it costs to acquire the black cat and if you look at the scoring for the black cat if you look at how many points she has put up so far this year first of all 
she is the rich for my blood. <laughs> well, <laughs> I I do want to say since we're talking about it, uh, mm-hmm. I made sure that's why I did eleven ninety nine and not just the full twelve hundred, so that when I win this season, I can say I gave y'all a chance, gave <laughs> a chance to just say nope, Batman is mine. All one team had to do was say twelve hundred, and then I couldn't top it. The best I could do was match it, and I don't believe I would have uh, would have been able to walk away with Brucey. Well, so here, so I mean, I, I I guess I should try to do the math right now because Black Cat was the uh, she scored six. She has scored sixty eight points so far this year, and she went for five dollars, and that is uh, what like percentage? Seventy eight per- like cents a point. <laughs> seventy eight cents a point compared to the two dollars and fifty cents a point that batman is costing Just so so congratulations listeners you have gotten your your economics lesson on how much women earn in the workplace <laughs> uh stay tuned later for another lesson <laughs> <laughs> uh so you know i mean there's not a lot to say about felicia hardy but i will jump into the wiki anyway wiki 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 Black Cat follows in the footsteps of her father, learning the tricks of the trade for burglary, eventually losing her criminal ways to fight for the greater good. Uh, she is has not yet appeared in live action. And I believe we got a visual referent from Kia last week, uh, who was French, Indonesian, and Chinese. So... Uh, She's still light skinned, but she's got that quote unquote exotic look. And uh, yeah, Felicia Hardy. The approval rating was a little bit on the uh, controversial side, so to speak, with only a 66.7% approval rating, but all 66.7 was strongly approved. And there was 11.1% somewhat disapprove and 2.2, sorry, 22.2% racist that's what i mean people... that 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 actually kind of does feel a little bit racist just because, like i mean it's it's kind of crazy that that anybody could disapprove of i guess what what exactly are they disapproving of i always feel like i, I wish that more people would comment what exactly they're saying that they disapprove of like are you disapproving of the fact that she got drafted so early or like what what exactly is the mindset there because it's Kind yeah, but weird. the thing, but the thing about it is that you know it's not like the earlier formats when we had you know round by round. I mean, because right. it's because it's based on the price. I mean, I guess you could say that they you could have gotten her for cheaper. Is that I mean, is that the argument? Right, that, that's like, what I'm saying. Like it's it's crazy because I mean she she um like he's honestly, these, I, I'm gonna I, name I, some characters that she has has outscored thus far this year. Mm-hmm. Nightcrawler, mm-hmm. Sue Storm. Cable, Hulk, I'm oh, sorry, She-Hulk, Luke Cage, Venom, and Mr. Fantastic, sorry, not Mr. Fantastic, sorry, and Iron Fist. She has outscored all of those characters this year, in part yeah. because she has a solo book. Right. And it is, it is crazy to me, honestly, that, um, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's just kind of uh, weird to consider because even though she does have a solo thing, like, at the same time you still are not quite mm-hmm. sure how much her future is like kind of written um mm-hmm. to to show up so to have gotten her for such a a, a inexpensive bid but at the same time she's you know in the in the the interim she's still scoring i think i mean i i i can respect it yeah me too um, so moving on to the next pick, and that you should take a bow right now, Randy, because mm-hmm. this was you, the black delegation. S- you made some slick moves this 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 time out because you got for twelve dollars, twelve dollars, people. Doctor Doom. Oh yes, <laughs> Doctor Motherfucking Doom, <laughs> aka. The number six Marvel antagonist under Fantasy Comics League. Now, granted, he's only put up 36 points this year, which means he put up 
a little bit over half of what uh, Black Cat put up, and you paid a little bit more than twice what, what Black Cat uh, cost. But this mm-hmm. is Doctor Motherfucking Doom. <laughs> yes, yes, you know. Is. And why don't you give the people a little taste of what you're reimagining? I know you talked about it a little bit on the show, but you know, just for the people who were not here last week, you know, talk about what Black Doctor Doom is all about. Black Doctor Doom is is a conqueror. Um, just plain and simple. He he wanted to. He you know he grew up in. Wakanda so he sees like how great that you know our our uh technology can advance and stuff like that we we were not you know we <laughs> Wakanda was not colonized and so they were allowed to advance very far in their technology and, and so he sees that there is um that that basically the the goodness that comes out of Wakanda as far as what he sees comes from order and a a, a dedication to um order and tradition and so yeah that that lends to like the sciences but it also lends to magic and just having like basically anything that allows you to um you know uh, achieve the best outcome now have you considered um you know not to cut you off too much but have you considered you know i mean a big part of doom's story is uh, the time that he spends in the um, kind of Romani tribes, you know, there's a, another term for them that people use back in the day that's now a slur, but, um, you know, that growing up kind of in that, in that subgroup uh, among the people kind of, it helped him to be, you know, beloved, beloved in, you know, um, by the Latverians. Do you? Well, I, I, I think that's valid because mm-hmm. I, I do like, again, I, I don't, I, I'm I'm not really a fan of like completely throwing away the background. You mm-hmm. can always like you know find some yeah. some valid uh, parts to incorporate. But yeah, I mean my my essential idea is that he wants to conquer, and Wakanda does not approve. Mm-hmm. They exile him. Like they they Wakanda yeah. has a history of exiling folks right. who they think are too extreme. Now, so, one thing that you could consider you know, if I may, is that, you know, maybe, maybe it's kind of similar to what we saw play out in the Black Panther movie with, you know, in in Jaka and his father, where, you know, he, he kind of learns that he's, he's, it's instilled in him by, you know, by his father, but then his father is killed, um, you know, killed for, for trying to uh, uh, turn uh, Wakandans into into conquerors and then you know he becomes an orphan and then he has to um you know he has that he has the still he's he still had that instilled in him but now he grows up in Latveria but still as a Wakandan still with that sense of superiority and still with that sense that he wants to you know basically turn Latveria into a better better than Wakanda Oh well, to be fair, I'm I'm trying to move a little bit away from like the dead parents background <laughs> as a as a I trope. Mean, I mean, but, that's but, hard. I mean, to, that is a really hard thing to do, Randy. I mean, <laughs> but but if if it ain't broke, then you know don't fix it. So I mean, it, I I feel like again that's that's something that you could definitely explore and feel like you know his his family was personally slighted. I, I'll put it that way. I, I don't know if it would directly like result in in his parents dying, but somehow his family ends up getting exiled in disgrace. And he he sets out to like prove his point about um you know the what what Wakanda can achieve by exerting its dominance. So so in your so is, is it in your estimation that um you know Doom is so sort of self assured and he believes in in his superiority is this more of a um he believes in wakandan superiority than well even i i I would say that he sees himself as like peak wakandan stock like uh, i mean you you get kind of almost into like that that sort of eugenics sort of uh terminology because he feels like he has the potential to be the best of the best and so therefore whatever he does or whatever he you know sets out to do is 
you know, he he's going to show that his actions and his achievements are like, look, it's it's Wakandan, but, you know, it's specifically my brand of like what I bring to the table. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I, th- I think I think that one one thread that you might want to want to introduce in there is the idea that, you know, people have criticized and I think even Tatani Hesse Coates run of Black Panther criticized the notion of Wakanda being a, a monarchy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, you could imagine a situation where Dune kind of looks down on the Wakandan monarchy because he doesn't believe that um, that th- it, it, it ensures that the best person rule, you know, that I if mean, it was he, some- it, it, the, the consideration here mm-hmm. is that he thinks that Wakanda for all of their, like, you know, the, the brutality that they're capable of, all of the achievement, he thinks that they're not going far enough. Mm-hmm. So I, I could absolutely see that, you know, he still leans into the idea of being an autocrat, like like Doom, you know, would normally do in the comic, sure. and so that that to me is like the overriding consideration when I when I um went for you know when I when I went for Doom, right? Well, I mean, I think that there's a lot that could be you know played with there in the character. Obviously, it you know it's a it could be controversial because he's so associated with Eastern Europe, um, mm-hmm. and you know I would imagine that there's just a visceral uh, knee-jerk reaction against it by by the people. I don't believe that the polls have closed so far on the Doom uh, pick, but let me check, let me make sure. Um, also, just to, to let people know, we have been joined by, from the Latinx delegation, Carlos. Carlos, hey. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm, I'm checking in for a couple minutes and then i'll probably be back on in a little while okay yeah nice uh what were your thoughts about uh black doom carlos black doom sounds so foreboding um <laughs> um no i i i uh i dig the pick i, I like the the wakandan uh background um i do wish there was some way to work in the romani of it all yeah um, into Doom's backstory, but like, but that's why I think making him an, a Wakandan uh, expat, an expat that was then orphaned and raised Romani um, could square that circle. Mm. You know? I, I yeah, I even kind of wonder if like, what if there was some sort of like persecuted tribe of the original Wakandan tribes that was like, oh. you know, like some kind of original sin of Wakanda. Mm-hmm. was that there you know how many tribes are there five i don't remember i mean i can't remember how many numbers mm-hmm. there were but what if there were six and the sixth tribe you know was the only one that wasn't down with sharing the power and so they were pushed out and this doom is a descendant of that tribe interesting i don't know i kind of like it more tribe i kind of like it more as almost like a killmongerish you know, like one generation removed from modern Wakanda, but then he just comes up harder than than uh, T'Challa ever did. And because he came up harder, he feels like he's more fit than than T'Challa would be. Yeah, that works you too. Know? Obviously, the movie is very <laughs> successful. <laughs> um, so actually the polls did close from the people and the people spoke. Uh, not necessarily with uh, with what what I would have how I would have spoken, but seventy four point one percent approval rating, including fifty nine point three strongly approve, fourteen point eight somewhat approve, eighteen point five somewhat disapprove, and seven point four percent racist. We're back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, any other thoughts about uh, any other thoughts about Black Doctor Doom? I like that you threw in Doctor there before I'm gonna speak because <laughs> I was like, I don't want to say those words in the same <laughs> order. Uh, I, was, I was gonna say Black Victor Von Doom. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, I, I think it's fun. I think Doom 
it, Doom has been portrayed so many different ways that that this would be this would be great and it would be interesting and hell this would be a great idea for our MCU Doom if we tie him into Wakanda. That is a really good point. You could there's a way to do that. I agree. Yeah, it could be more interesting. And then we have to call him Boastful Doom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bloom, I think, is is the is the proper term. Not Bloom. <laughs> no, the MC the MCU buzzword is boastful. <laughs> when you want to do the black version of someone, you say boastful. <laughs> boastful. And then you make sure the Funkos only give them out at the uh, Comic Cons, and they'll make them white. Yes. So you're gonna uh, get a Funko. It's gonna be a little white boy. And if you want anything different, you better take your ass to New York. <laughs> Or, or Los Angeles or Chicago. I believe those are the three big ones. So, so this brings us to what I thought was going to be one of the major steals of the round. Uh, stay tuned later for what was the real steal of the round. Um, Clark Kent, a.k.a. Superman. Again, uh -huh. Randy, take a bow. The Black Delegation acquired Superman for just a little bit over half of what Batman was acquired for, 600. That's right, nerds. I have harnessed the emotional spectrum. I have harnessed hope and doom in the same <laughs> round. <laughs> uh, yes, I will go ahead and read from the wiki, even though everyone should know who Superman is. Rocketed to Earth as an infant from the doomed planet Krypton, kal was adopted by the loving Kent family and raised in America's heartland as Clark Kent. Using his immense solar-fueled powers, he became Superman to defend mankind against all manner of threats while championing truth, justice, and the African-American way. That is correct. <laughs> it's a bird, it's a plane, it is Superman. <laughs> 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 and yes, we did it. Yes, we did it. The fan cast was Reggie Jean Page, another another British black man, because that's how we do. Um, <laughs> I burn for you, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bridgerton himself. Uh, Randy, let the you know tell us a little bit more about about Black Superman. Well, I, I was thinking uh, about just how you know that last time we talked about um maybe would he have been adopted by white parents or black parents i feel like he would have been adopted by black parents because oh, okay. he, he i i, I want to see the relationship of being perceived as a threatening other i, oh. I want to see him grow up with that gotcha. and you know he he feels like that but then it turns out to be more real for him. So, it, it, you know, there, there's the impetus behind him becoming a journalist is kind of inquiring into human nature, but also kind of letting himself be that, that purveyor of truth. Right, um, fighting and, for injustice, fighting against injustice. Right. Uh, and and we, we recently had, um, uh, I think it was an issue of uh, truth and justice, I believe the comment was, where uh, Superman was like, uh, investigating, uh, you know, unfair, like uh, unjust uh, incarceration rate for for black people who are like um, getting, you know, it, it was a super villain plot, but it was like the the super villain was trying to like transport people out of black men out of prison to make them look like they were, you know, especially you know heinous criminals or something like. It was it was something that that kind of just stuck with me, like. Um, that was the first time I had ever actually seen somebody depict Superman specifically talking about injustice level toward black men in small, like in, in, in Metropolis. And it, it wasn't like a, you know, oh yeah, the, the abstract thing. It was like he directly addressed it and he directly um, spoke on it in terms of his own investigative reporting. Gotcha. Well, I'm I'm interested in it. You know, I think we've we've talked about this before about the rumored uh, Tana Hesse Coates uh, Black Superman movie that may be coming. You know, it's DC, so we, it's always a little bit tentative. But um, 
you know, he was one of the people that we had in mind for uh, for potential fan casting. And I got to say, I'm, you know, you're, you're finding out here right now in the podcast that if he actually is cast, bonus points. Oh, <laughs> so wait, do we have to do we have to nail? Do I get bonus points if I if I have a if I have a character and a white person gets cast, or is it just the cast? No, no. I'm saying that if the exact same person is cast, oh, yeah, wow, yeah. I what mean, if, what if what if that person is cast, but they announce it before the scoring starts? No points. <laughs> no points. <laughs> nope. Because here's the, no, because because here's the thing. We talked about this before from our bonus point system that um. You know, you if if any news uh, related to a project involving a character, you draft, um, you know, a live action me, adaptation will get you bonus points. However, if you nail the casting, that is sufficient. You know, uh, significantly more bonus points. Um, so, so note to self: when when we get when we get a uh, when, when we finally figure out time travel i go back in time and <laughs> and and uh figure out how to like yeah i'm gonna draft black adam and i'm going to go for the rock as the draft pick ha ha <laughs> right so i mean if that's what obviously... you use time travel for i'd be so disappointed <laughs> <laughs> yeah that... i would use time travel for so many horribly stupid things like i would i would see the the kevin durant warriors play the michael jordan bulls <laughs> oh you would say i mean listen i've talked what about time this travel are you in <laughs> this, is like the, this is like the tva tournament you know yeah. you just grab variants of all the well, imagine if they did that imagine if there was an episode or an issue of like a tva comic where they just like randomly snatched up variants just to <laughs> set up an all-star game of <laughs> Well, they, uh, get, they get the Michael Jordan who like became an accountant. <laughs> they, they get the Michael Jordan who didn't retire, you yeah. know, um, and one like who was cut from his high school basketball team and said, "Well, I guess that's it." <laughs> <laughs> I just want, I just want, I just want White Shaq who who doesn't actually dunk or or make free throws. He's he's essentially yeah. Chris Dudley. Yeah, he's God. he's actually he's Irish Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I like my Shaq boastful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, but yeah, Superman. What else? What else about Superman? I mean, FCL points. I'll go ahead and and, and give you what he has scored to date: three hundred and one FCL points, aka sixty percent of Batman. Um, but uh, fifty, but fifty percent the price. Mm-hmm. that's there's 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 what we like to call value <laughs> next up the other big name player mm-hmm. of the, the other big name player of the round the marvel equivalent to batman but not really because he doesn't put up nearly amount nearly the amount of points as batman but we <laughs> know him and we love him peter parker the amazing, spectacular, sensational, adjectiveless, star, <laughs> one of the stars of Into the Spider Verse, Spider Man himself, beloved by millions across the world, and anyone can wear the mask. But this time, the man under the mask is Asian American, is East Asian, East Southeast Asian delegation. Eleven hundred dollars and their fan cast, Stephen Yoon, which is a great piece of fan casting, yes, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Yeah, what do you I, guys? I'm so. I was brought up in the thread for it. I'm so sick of teenage Peter Parker. It. I, I don't. I don't. I don't need it anymore. He. He hasn't been teenage in the comic books essentially outside of like you know ultimate lines mm-hmm. and things like that since the 60s i'm i'm good with i'm good with uh, an adult peter parker um well Cordy, that that's interesting though because you love spectacular spider-man which is some like for my money the best iteration of spider-man of the 21st century yeah but you know i don't i don't need to see it everywhere it was it they they stuck the the they nailed everything in Spectacular Spider-Man and nothing is going to get better than that because that show was 
fantastic and had the catchiest, most annoying theme song ever. It was not annoying. We used to sing it. We used to sing it at diners in the middle of the night. Well, I am hoping that we get in the MCU, we finally get college age Spider-Man and not whatever the hell Tobey Maguire was doing in the, (laughs) I don't, I don't know what age he was supposed to be. He was but, going back to school, Spider Man. Yeah. Like he was. He was. How do? How do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> Spider Man. Toby Toby McGuire's Peter Parker had to go back for his GED. Around here, we don't shame people for their their achievements. <laughs> but in case you've lived uh, in a bunker like Cindy Moon. Peter Parker was bitten by a radioactive spider as a teenager, granting him spider-like powers. After the death of his uncle Ben, Peter learned that with great power comes great responsibility. Swearing to um, great responsibility. I know that's the misquote. Swearing to always protect the innocent from harm, Peter Parker became Spider-Man. Sorry. Um, (laughs) Yes. So. uh, it remained now this 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 is what this what made this controversial for me is that there was a you know there's been a little bit of speculation that uh even though they're ramping up the amazing spider-man book uh, in the fall to thrice per month three issues per month mm-hmm. there's a big rumor ben that he Ryan might not actually be the spider-man yeah that could yeah. be rough that could be really rough to spend, uh, you yeah. know, ninety percent of Batman, to not get ninety percent of Batman's <laughs> performance. I but, wonder how did how did they score? I wonder were they scoring for Superior Spider-Man? Did that still count as Peter Parker? I don't Ooh, think it's good. That is a good question. I mean, it should. It, it was should. Peter Parker. It was his body. It was Peter right. Parker's body, and was also, uh, um, I think, both scores. Hmm. I think. Maybe that's, that's well, because Parker and Otto Octavius, yeah. Because I think because when they did something similar with the Flash, when Reverse Flash was in Barry Allen's bo- body, mm-hmm. I think you know the things that were attributable to uh Reverse Flash, like his mentality, he got points for, mm-hmm. and then the things that were attributable to Barry Allen, um, I think they both got points. I did my, I'm, I'm doing my raising the rock eyebrow here. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I may, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll check in with the, I'll check in with the FCL people to find out how that works. I also, I also wonder that about Ben Riley, and I was like, no. I wonder if, are we oh, doing- Ben Riley's totally draftable though, just so you know. Right, mm-hmm. oh, of course. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> oh yeah, you were getting Ben Riley for a dollar, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think I think the, the the Ben Riley issue is valid. However, it is like one book out of like seven. So yeah, even though it's coming out, it's going to be getting released a lot. There are still you know, myriad Peter Parker uh, Marvel titles. Yeah. Not to mention all the guest appearances. I think I was. I think he was. He was just randomly swinging in the background of X Men this week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh look, there's Spidey. Saying like, "Oh, hey, X Men, yeah, cool." Right, <laughs> and you know that's not just an appearance; that's a swing. That is yeah. an, probably an right. agility. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think honestly, I think they've been underscoring Peter because we know from last season he was for a little while um, he was much closer than he's much closer to to Batman than what he what he's been so far this year so people people don't like draw spider-man just to like stand around anytime he shows up it's going to be oh he's swinging from his web or he's climbing hanging on the wall, so. right or he's hanging upside down from the ceiling like yeah. exactly so yeah but he's got his mask halfway up and he's eating a sandwich which i bet counts as a power <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh Couple take you back to a couple weeks ago. Uh, we've learned that uh, heroes heroes definitely eat. Um, <laughs> and oh, even if you ha- even if you have to lift up your mask to do it. Now I'm just thinking of Spider Man Rain, and I got sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why that's what he that's why he does what he does, so he doesn't have to worry about that. He can you know he can web her up and 
you know. Uh, so uh, I saw some other characters. <laughs> Weber so up, and Weber down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos, for helping helping <laughs> to finish that thought. But let's find out what the people thought. Actually, I think this. I wonder bit, if it comes out like webbing. Yeah. So this. <laughs> this no. Now that I now that I remember this this was one of the the longer bidding wars. This this bidding war went went for quite a few days. So mm -hmm. this. So we're still uh, we're still a couple of days from finding out the final status of uh, the final status of the polls, but I can tell you what, where we are right now. And if you'd like to vote in the approval poll, go ahead to racial draft pod on Twitter where you can find out. How and shout out to Josh. Newest oh, yes. member of the yeah. Southeast Asian delegation coming yes. in and make it power moves, power moves. Impressive. I, I, I respected it. I liked it. I couldn't get away with eleven $1 hundred dollars because somebody on this chat had to bid eleven $1 hundred and ten dollars just knowing that I was going to go over it because at that point you are committed. <laughs> that that sort of bidding at that point, if you if you feel like you're you're not quite committed, then then you start playing psychological games. That's the only way to feel like you've won. So currently the approval rating is at 81 percent but there are still five more days to to vote so go ahead listeners go ahead and jump on uh and if you are going to be racist of which there are six percent who strongly disapprove we're gonna need you to we're gonna need you to tell us uh, I like Mike looks at me every time he says racist. <laughs> racist. <laughs> we're just gonna need you to say i'm voting strongly disapprove because i'm racist you know, or I'm some other say, reason. I, I suppose you, there's some other reason. <laughs> I'm going to say that if you think Stephen Yoon wouldn't be a good Peter Parker, but you enjoy Invincible, you can go fuck yourself. How about that? Yeah. That, exactly. I mean, Stephen Yoon has been the perfect Peter Parker since he was Glenn on <laughs> The Walking Dead. Um, yes. That was basically Peter Parker in the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> exactly. Including he got his own Mary Jane. In, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> God, I hate Negan <laughs> so much. Oh, that, you, came, you came mighty close with those. I know. Things. That's what I was gonna say. I was like, ne Negan is, is <laughs> sounds like a sounds like a white guy coming really close to. Uh, <laughs> he's like, we. Th what if that's what if that's the reason he chose that name just to like oh, get wow. a whole bunch of people to be like Negan with attitudes. <laughs> <laughs> It's like for once I'm gonna need you to hit that hard end. <laughs> I'm like for for a second, my my spidey sense went off. <laughs> That's, yep, the Negans with attitudes. Fine, it all comes comes down because remember they used to say, "I we were all Negan." Mm. <laughs> Negan, please. <laughs> wow. Listen, this is this is this is better than than the the black uh, Mjolnir that, I, that so I'm 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 okay with this. This is all right. But that brings us to another strong. We had a we had a lot of strong picks this this round, um, and none stronger than the Queen of the Solar System. Once again, our Black Queen was lost to us from the black community but this time acquired by the native american delegation that's right the yeah. native american delegation comes out the gate paying 390 dollars for storm mm -hmm. what were your thoughts about uh about the storm pick uh start with you carlos um i mean i love the pick given storms uh recent promotion mm -hmm. i wonder how often she's going to get used in the books um i i i mean i love the pick i love the character i don't know that i necessarily love the value they got her at but i mean it's it's a it's also just it's cool to have storm on your team so i wish i had storm on the team well, to to hear the the FCL folks tell it, there, yeah, there so, was a, so I was a bit of overpaying. 
I mean, so so the so the weird thing about Storm is that she these are the characters that Storm has outscored uh, so far in uh, in in the current year. Mm-hmm. Shang Chi, Luke Cage, Mister Fantastic, Doctor Strange, Black Panther, Iron Man, Miles Morales. These are all characters that Storm has outscored. She's the number five current uh, Marvel character. Um, she's a heavy hitter. And I think that there's a possibility that with her new position, she could show up and she could start showing up in cosmic books, especially mm-hmm. because Al Ewing, especially because Al Ewing uh, not only writes Sword, but he also writes Guardians of the Galaxy. Listen. Yeah, I think I think my issue is like my my initial response was I don't know how she's going to factor into what's going on in the X books right now, but mm-hmm. certainly in the fall, who knows by then, right. you know. All right, I got to sign off for a couple minutes. I'll be back on in a little while. All right, cool. All right. I let me let me let you in on how white people work. <laughs> Storm, we get Storm's giving a run. And now they will bring her back a little bit and push her to the back pages when when fall comes. Honestly, that that is my honest fear for Storm. I mean, we all love Storm. We all, you know, every I think anybody who's of the right age was rocking the uh, the Mohawk Storm. But I get scared <laughs> that she will once again be pushed in the background and just sort of be there for random X Men leadership team that doesn't really do anything. And I, I don't have faith that Marvel will continue to push her. I hear you. I mean, I was shocked. I was shocked to find out that she is currently outscoring Jean Grey by 50 points. Mm-hmm. And Cyclops by almost as much. You know, um, she now granted, we, we, we had this whole issue uh, last season. But I seem to remember that Storm had this one week where she put up like 20 points all by herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was crazy. So she's got that upside potential, even if most of the time, you know, she's not putting up a lot of points per appearance. I mean, if if I'm being honest, I have a, a couple of thoughts here. First of all, um, you know, even though it is very sad to not have um, won her for, for the Black delegation, I, I, I'm okay. I'm, I'm coping with, with her her uh, introduction to the to the native delegation um now did you see far, their visual referent i believe i did i have to go and uh look again and make sure but i i think i did well i'm gonna you know just uh once again tip my hat to the native american delegation for their uh reference um visually of what the native american storm with, would look like you can also see that at either our Facebook page, our Instagram page, or our Twitter page. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, listen. If you're a if you're a, a Native American artist and you'd like to render your own um, interpretation of Native American Storm, go ahead and do that and tag us, and uh, we'll shout you out on the show. Yeah, I mean, I as you know, I, I feel like that's a, a, a fairly decent fit for Storm. And as far as her uh, appearances in comics, I'm, I'm happy that she's kind of um, been ingratiated with a lot of like white writers. <laughs> like ju- just because, you know, even though she doesn't always do something, I think she rarely does nothing. Like right. when she shows up, she's not just like, hey guys, it's a Royal Royal Monroe. It's like, no, she's the queen descending from the heavens, doing the thing with the lightning and the rain and the wind. And and so I feel like uh, Marvel does have a, a sort of um, uh, unusual relationship with her mm-hmm. in that they do allow her to show up. Um, writers typically, when they write a, a an ex book, they want Storm in there somewhere. Right. She may not even be on the team. She's you know at some point you're going to see Storm show up. Right, and I also and, think that I mean you know not to be. cynical, but I'm going to be like 80% cynical. (laughs) Storm is extremely popular, particularly with Black women. And if you want to get on Black women's bad side, do something fucked up to Storm. 
and see how that uh, <laughs> fuck around and yeah. find out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Our- Marvel never treated Storm like they did Miss Marvel in the uh, the late eighties. No, because the Marvel would not exist. Marvel would not exist if they did to Storm what they, they did to Ms. Mar- Ms. Yeah, Marvel. Yeah, they they dare not. Like they, right. she and you know for her right now, her her status is you know people have been calling for her to get a solo title, but in the meantime, she's in Black Panther's comic upcoming, which uh, it was moved three months away, I believe, from the original right. uh, date. So, you know, that, I, I don't know if that's going to fall within our purview of, of scoring, but, you know, she, that she'll be there. And also, she will be showing up in X titles. So, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hopeful. I don't know if I'm necessarily optimistic, but I am hopeful, and I feel like um, she, she may uh, surprise some folks. Right. Well, Again, this is another situation where the voting of the polls is ongoing. We still have five days to vote in the polls, but currently the approval rating is uh, 89% with no racists, which again, fuck around and find out. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, I guess I'll, I mean, everyone, like I said, everyone knows, I don't have to read from the wiki. We know who Storm is, but that brings us to by far, by far, the bargain acquisition of oh. the round, aka women make 80 cents on the dollar, <laughs> as Diana Prince, yeah, Wonder woman, pe- known worldwide, star in multiple movies, um, iconic. Um, whatever you could say, all of the accolades, part of the DC trended, Trinity, number three scorer in the Fantasy Comics League DC mm-hmm. division. Actually, potentially number three scorer overall. Give me a second, guys. Sorry, number four scorer overall in FCL so far. Helped lead the Latinx, sorry, helped lead the multiracial delegation to victory in the first oh, season. Oh. And she was acquired for $400, AKA 33% of Batman. Um, it is a damn shame. Damn shame. Oh. I tried to drum up, yes. I tried to draw a business. And one. Carlos dipped out just in time so that he didn't have to um, face. <laughs> Scrutiny for the stealing of of Wonder Woman for the Latinx delegation. The absolute steal. Uh, good on the Latinx delegation. Uh, wait, is this a situation where a, a where they're paying a, a Latinx um, uh, to do the job that an American would do for more? <laughs> like, is this what, what's happening here? <laughs> No. <laughs> was it the double is it the double whammy of of sexism and racism it just might be i i think I, they yeah. took our jobs you know <laughs> like wow took our jobs. latino latino wonder woman uh you know holler at me we'll get you a raise we'll get, we got to figure this out um <laughs> but i'll go ahead and read from the wiki because wonder woman warrants it the Amazon princess, blessed with godlike super abilities, Wonder Woman is one of Earth's most powerful defenders of peace, justice, and equality, and a member of the Justice League. She's considered an archetype for many heroines outside of comic books. She stands for love, beauty, and humanity. Her initial origin allegorically depicted her as a clay baby brought to life by a patron goddess, by patron goddess Aphrodite. But in recent years, she has been depicted more literally as the daughter of Zeus and Amazon queen Hippolyta. Wonder Woman, major, 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 major name, gonna probably put up points, and uh, four hundred dollars, aka ten dollars more than Storm. And as much as I love Storm, Wonder Woman is probably gonna score more, significantly more. Yeah, I mean it's it's crazy because we we um, I don't know we we got like just it a lot of stuff would not add up if we were going according to like um, 
a, a direct proportional calculation. Like, I mean, I, I know FCL was is, it was was trying to kind of give us a, um, you know, their their insight into like mm-hmm. informing who who should, you know, go for how much. But I, I mean, we got too many wild cards drafted. <laughs> so, yeah, we do. Some folks are gonna go for like way higher than you expect, and some of them are gonna be like, "How the heck?" <laughs> did you get that person for that much? but that is part of the fun of the racial draft it's not just about the economics of it it's also yeah. about the preferences of people who would be a good fit for the delegation you know i am really looking forward to um you know the art we got a little bit of uh, fan art from from carlos in uh, mm-hmm. depicting a latina wonder woman but if you are if you want to do uh, cosplay if you're a latina who does cosplay and you'd like to share it with us at the fantasy comics league we will signal boost you if you are an artist and you'd like to show your depictions of latina wonder woman we are all about it mm-hmm. you know so go ahead i mean uh the the bonus points economy continues uh, continues and based on the bonus points economy i have to award an additional ten dollars I have to award an additional ten dollars to the Latinx delegation for their for their fan art. So you're here, guys. Oh, they won last year. They don't need any any bonuses. I mean, it's, it's last season. It's, excuse me. Any any it's it's consolation to me that at least the bonus points went to Carlos and not Gordy. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I I don't need him getting any more extra money. You stay at your little one dollar so I can bully you for the rest of the season. Ten dollars is ten dollars isn't gonna buy me anything in this world. There is way too much information. <laughs> so I, I will I will try, but uh if you if you see some some stick figures with <laughs> white out faces, know that know that I'm trying to get some money to buy some in the rest of the draft. And that brings us to so far, the final acquired character uh, in this past week, and that would be your friend and mine, James Logan Howlett, mm-hmm. aka Wolverine, aka the short guy that is always depicted as a tall guy in the movies. <laughs> and, um, you know, the multiracial delegation of uh, uh, finished uh, finished second place in a lot of the polls, so I think they did a little bit of an overpay to acquire their guy, Wolverine, mm-hmm. five hundred and eighty nine dollars. Uh, money would have been potentially better spent on Wonder Woman, as far as I'm concerned, but you know it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and read from the wiki: a long lived mutant with the rage of a beast and the soul of a samurai, James Logan Howlett once mysterious past is filled with blood war and betrayal possessing an accelerated healing factor keenly enhanced senses and bone claws in each hand along with his skeleton that are coated in adamantium wolverine is without question the ultimate weapon uh and in this reimagining wolverine is half white half japanese and um I mean, if we go through Wolverine's history um, in, in terms of his ties to different uh, samurai and ninjas and um, serving in the in World War, different wars, including World War II, mm-hmm. I think that there's, I think that there's some room to play around with, uh, with him being kind of divided between, between these, these two, the two cultures. So going to be interesting to see whether we get a little bit of fan art in that respect but overall i can sort of see it I can sort of see uh multiracial wolverine yeah i mean you know he's wolverine so old he's probably dipped that old pen in all the uh, <laughs> so it, at this point he probably he probably has four or five kids of every <laughs> race creed color variation you could come up with that is true i i've you know what i've never understood about wolverine how is he canadian if he was there before canada was um i guess he falsified his paperwork probably i mean you know everybody oh he's a he's a canuck and all that but like no he he was there before canada 
So mm. wait, was he there before? I mean, because Canada wasn't a Canada established in like the early 1800s. I mean, it depends on which you know Wolverine's backstory has changed more. Okay. Than anybody mm-hmm. so i guess it depends I, I i you know as as anybody who's uh, been around my twitter knows there's nothing i hate more than an argument about what's canon but uh, <laughs> but yeah. but uh but yeah i mean i know at one point logan was it was at the revolutionary war so it would be- oh wow i don't remember that i thought <laughs> i thought is i i thought it only goes back to like the 1830s but I mean, maybe I'm misremembering, or maybe it was like an Elseworlds story that I'm remembering. But uh, that sounds like a Fox movie to me. That sounds like <laughs> that sounds like some shit that they would do in a Fox movie. Absolutely. Did, didn't yeah? Didn't didn't he fight Cree, uh, Victor Creed through all of the wars? Wasn't that? Yeah, wasn't, that's yeah. exactly. That, Wait, that is, oh God, I hope that's not what I'm remembering. I'm gonna spend. <laughs> finding Logan in the in in the American Revolutionary War comic just so I can go it wasn't the fox that I was thinking <laughs> and uh, and I think he was, was Wolverine in Marvel 1602 he probably was probably really popular but um look I'm I'm a f- I was a fan not feeling a little bit funny about the price um because of you know more money um, almost as much as superman and here's here's where i get to, to point out that uh in terms of fantasy comics league points so far yeah. this year wolverine he is number three um, i mean it's not and i don't see that that paring down you know right. i don't see them pulling back on logan at any point now that he's not dead or in hell or any of those uh any of those existential Logan fighting death stories. Yeah, exactly. Well, there are still some characters on the board that have uh, sc- either scored a little bit more or comparably to well, Wolverine. And I'm not going to name them right now, but um, you know, we'll keep that in mind as people's budgets continue to dwindle. Yeah, yes. not, yes. that's not how this is going to work. The nominations aren't going to. We're not. We're not drafting. There's going to be some off the wall deep cut nominations whenever we're ready to make nominations i'm just i saying. mean this is how we segue gordy <laughs> because uh graciously though i will have randy throw out a nomination for the black delegation live on the podcast of course because it's there's one thing i love that's being put on the spot um randy wh- whoever you say I'm gonna bid a dollar on them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just letting you know, don't think you're getting away with a zero dollar bid, Randy. I, I am going to. Oh my gosh, who, who can I try to like? I, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Who exactly? Uh, can, can you run through all of everybody who's who's uh who's had their um who's been picked so far? Mm-hmm. Sure, first, uh, first Batman. Batman, like, Black Cat, Doctor Doom, Superman, Spider Man, Storm, Wonder Woman, Logan, and currently still being bid, but there's a couple hours to go. So who knows uh, whether the Black delegation will win that bid? Uh, Steve Rogers, Captain America, and and those are the only that's the only person that's still being bid on. That is the only outstanding bid right now. Okay, so um, I will bid two dollars. Okay. On Barry Allen. The Flash. Barry Allen does sound like a brother. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, $2 opening bid just to keep just to keep Gordy from uh, placing a counter bid. Now, I did gotta ask. Know, did you know that the BA and BA Baracus actually stood for Barry Allen? <laughs> what? <laughs> I pity the fool who tried to steal speed force. <laughs> <laughs> now you know if we go through barry allen's story of uh um his his father going to jail and um his mother dying and him uh going to school and becoming really fast but still finding a way to be late all the time <laughs> I, I gotta i gotta look mike that was masterful how you ignored the cop thing <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> let that one go. We ain't gonna that part. I mean, he's not technically a cop. He's a, a medical. Yeah, he's he's a cop. He's a cop. I mean, he's got a badge and a gun, so yeah. he, you know. But he's but he's trying to be, he's trying to do that so that he can free his his wrongly convicted dad. So you know, I'm just saying that there's there's a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of wiggle room for for Black Barry Allen. <laughs> but as per opening bid rules. The missing component is a visual reference. So when you close your eyes, Randy, listener, you do the same, uh, unless you're driving, uh, we do not be liable for that. Um, when you close your eyes and you imagine Black Barry Allen, who do you see? I am trying to uh, recall the name of... <laughs> black actors in the age range that I believe he should be in. Um, <laughs> I mean, oh. we can work through this since we're live on the podcast. Talk, yeah. talk us through it, talk us through. What kind of Negro are you imagining? Uh, a, a respectable, respectable cop? Uh, <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah. You you kind of have to, you you kind of have to go for somebody who, who kind of gives that feel of like kind of not not preppy per se but um so so quick question real quick you have watched the uh flash uh television show mm -hmm. um, on cw mm -hmm. and you've also you know seen the uh zack snyder interpretation of uh of barry allen i have you've also, but you've also read the comic and, uh, you know, various animated ver in, uh, incarnations of the Flash. If you had, you know, um, since you are, since you're imagining him as, as black, um, is he black? But which of the Barry Allens is he most like? I would say that he is most like, I mean, because I, I haven't like extensively read like the Flash solo comic, so I would say that he's probably closer to the Barry Allen from the CW. Okay, so he's that's that that Barry is substantially kind of like younger. Um, he's you know because he's he's kind of like Barry Allen mixed with Peter Parker a little bit. I, I mean, um, I, I guess I would say like his his personality is kind of that, but I, I would be okay if he was cast with someone older. Like he, okay. he doesn't have to be like a twenty-ish something Barry mm -hmm. Allen. Um, okay. All right. Um, so you're looking for a early thirties, early thirties black actor. Mm -hmm. Wow. I like I like that we're I like that we're, we're we're doing this. We're not just we're not just pulling it out. We're not saying the guy from that thing with the thing. <laughs> Well, I mean, because if, if, if I wanted to, like, just go for somebody who is that exact same age, then I would have cast the guy who plays um, uh, Chester Runk on the show. Like, I, I would have just, but I don't. Oh, I don't no, know. but that's, that, that's, yeah, that's, that, a, that's, that's a, that's a point. I, I don't want him for that, that, you know, he doesn't really fit. So I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to, uh. I don't want to just pull one out of. Uh, <laughs> a I hat. feel you. I feel you. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm looking, you know, I mean, I'm guessing he, you know, he's got to be a scientist. Mm -hmm. um, how do we feel about Donald Glover? I, I have, I've, mm, I'm, I'm okay with it. it. Let's, let's try maybe one or two more options. Let's see. Okay. Um, I love Donald Glover. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Going to see Childish Gambino this year. Um, I'm trying to remember his name, but I. What are you thinking? What are you thinking, Gordy? I'm horrible at at remembering actors' names. No, well, that's what I'm saying. Instead of instead of going for the name, talk through like the, what. Uh, Dre's oldest son on Blackish. Oh yeah, but oh, he's no. he's like. <laughs> he's like Young. super young yeah That's yeah young. No. i want i want my barry to start out like watching his mama die okay no. let's 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 uh let, let's maybe do <laughs> um okay so so i'll just hodge almost i guess you could be interesting well, i, I could be okay with him i could all this hodge i could see it i can definitely see it even though he's playing Hawkman. um but but in but in terms of the look 
in terms of the look? Yeah, you know? in, in terms of yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, he's definitely more of a like, like, are you sure you're a scientist, my dude? You know, like, <laughs> you, you're you, you got a little 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 build to you. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, like I, I want I want somebody who's who's like in round kind of early thirty ish. And and off the top of my head, the actors are just not coming to mind. But like, I mean, I, you know, you, like we could also go, we could we could go with the classic uh, John David Washington. You know, this is true. I mean, I know he's a little bit, he's a little older than early thirties. Um, well, I mean, he he's also um like a tad. Uh, I don't know. Is is his build kind of a bit stockier than I guess I, I would have think. Does it does it matter? Marvel give him that good old HGH and things will be all right. <laughs> right, but he's no, but the Flash is supposed to be. Well, remember he played professional football. I mean, not professional football. He played college football. But so I mean, like you know, he's got an, He's athletic. Um, well, he's I mean, not, I'm, I'm I'm not saying that he's not. I just mean like I, I would think of someone kind of more uh, on the lean side, and I, I hate to say it like that, but no, know, no, no. I I get it. I mean, you know, he's. I, I just think that, you know, he's not stocky. I wouldn't say he was stocky as much as I would say that he was athletic. Yeah. Um, you know, and plus he's not particular. he's not super tall. I think he's maybe 5'11". And he would be a better casting than the current movie Flash. Well, <laughs> that, I mean, that's just obvious. That's, that's a given. Um, yeah, the the only thing is that he's like, up. I would say that this version of the, the this, that version of Barry Allen would definitely be more towards the comic uh, incarnation because, you know, more seasoned has been doing it for a while. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's not, he's not filled with angst like the CW version of the flash would be. So um, the Google has decided that when I ask for a, a black male actor, they mean the, the lightest possible black. Uh, obviously, <laughs> obviously, uh, this is what Google does. Yes, this is, this is how it works. I mean, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, All man. right, Randy, we need it. We need we need a visual reference. I, I, I think I'm going to go with Aldous Hodge. Like, like, like pre, pre Hawkman workout Aldous Hodge. So you want like a six foot three. All right. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> no. no. All right. I mean, just, I'm just saying, if there was another white person around here, they wouldn't. They wouldn't immediately dog me out like that. Hmm. They give me a minute. <laughs> I didn't expect you would go with like. I mean, I'm gonna share with you some shirtless uh, Aldous Hodge picks, and you could say whether you consider uh, this guy to be the Flash. I mean, I've, like, I, I, have seen, he's... I I have seen him shirtless, but by all means, proceed. <laughs> listen, listen. When when I make my pick, guys, you're gonna both unify against me, so it's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> I'm just saying, Randy. That is a that is a shirtless man. I mean, I'm just saying that Barry Allen is uh is working out in the uh yeah Barry Allen is working out in the gym and at and at school. Yeah, I mean a man that a man that a man that looks that good should not be that fast um, but, but, because but he's going to quickly steal your girl. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I want to like I say I I want to try to find someone who is I mean if if I could find somebody better. Then you know you can find someone better, Randy. You just not not helping yourself. <laughs> like, I'm I'm like, I'm really really bad at remembering actors' names, and that, right, which that, is that, why that me you, all the time. Randy, I like it. I I like it. I think it works because I think he has the right screen presence for a he, very he de no. He has he has a good screen presence. I but again, you know, you're 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 setting yourself up because. He's already been cast to play Hawkman um, because he has more of a build for Hawkman. Um, and, you know, you just, it's going to, it's going to distract people. It's going to distract people from, <laughs> from the fact that, uh, you know, it's supposed to be the fastest man alive, not the finest man alive. You know, I'm just. I mean, just... <laughs> get you a man who could do both. <laughs> let, me, let me try to see if I I can... mean, he's covering, he's covered himself in, in this mask, you know, like, uh, Am I am am I being am I am I being uh, a bit too uh, I guess 
stereotypical if I go for like Lakeith Stanfield? Um, hmm. Like, I never, I never considered Lakeith as Barry Allen. Let me look at it. There, me... There's like so many roles that I think he could fill, but I mean, for me, like just drawing a blank right now, I wouldn't be mad at that. I would be mad at that. I, was, <laughs> uh, I have to admit, I would be mad at that. Yes. Um, he's not what I would envision. He's way too intense uh, to be Barry Allen. Like, Just go with Gator. I would I would cast Gator for everything because I love that man. Who? Uh, Gator. You ever watch uh, Dave on FX? Gator no. is Gator is the wonderful black friend and is also uh, a part of one of the best episodes of television that I've ever watched, where he discussed his uh, mental uh, his his mental health and is a fantastic young man. But he's not. He would be. He's skinnier than Snoop Dogg. I mean, he would be a very small, uh, uh, not not quite the physical presence without the old Marvel HGH. And I don't know if DC does that. Well, okay. I mean, but again, the Flash isn't supposed to be super built. Yeah, you but know? you still gotta you still gotta have some muscles. DC DC probably sends like anabolic steroids from the '80s anyway. They don't they don't get on that. Wow, but, I am I'm um, very okay. So so what about um? Dulé Hill. Okay, I know Dulé Hill. Yes, I know Dulé Hill. Um, I let me think about it. Wow. Um, so is this is this how it works on this delegation? Does it? Does Mike's got to Mike's got to prove everything, Randy. You don't you don't get your own voice. I like it. I like it. It's, no, it's, I'm just. I mean, listen, Rand, I, Randy I'm, gets the final call. It's just that <laughs> I'm giving my, you know before before it's officially submitted. I'm well. I mean, I'm giving I, my I my response. Is he like in it? Mm, I don't know, Randy. I think you're. I think you're pushing it. Oh think no, Randy. I think you're. I think you're. You're on the. I think I put you on the spot, and I think you're not living up to your, like the pressure. I think you. I think you might want to uh, take some time. We'll come back around. We'll give you some time to do your googles because Dulé Hill is not. Sorry, Dulé Hill, if you're listening, <laughs> um, but uh, you would not be. Anywhere near my fan cast. You, you, you heard what Michael said, Dulé Hill. He's calling you out. He said you don't got what it takes. I'm, I am, I'm, I'm in fact saying you don't have what it takes to be Barry Allen. Yes. That was, that was, that was so cold. Drew Hill felt it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, take some time, you know, work, work through some Googles. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump, we'll jump on to uh, Gordy and find out who Gordy has in mind. Well, listen, uh, I have Batman. Yes, and so if we're going to have the well-known older Batman, it may be time for the future slate Batman to come on home. So I'm going to take $1 and do me a little bit of Jace Fox. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think Randy's going to let me. I don't even think Randy's going to let me out before, before he uh, bids. But Paul Mescal who uh, was Emmy nominated on the television show, Normal People, which is on Hulu. It's a 25 year old Irish actor who actually, mm. if you've watched Normal People, if you give it a shot on Hulu, mm. he is fantastic. And he will be my uh, short lived uh, <laughs> cast for, for Jace Fox. Okay, uh, so, so, so what you're not about to do is, is take, is take the, the black Batman. So I'm, I'm gonna put $2 on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, but, I'm, gonna put two, I'm gonna put two dollars on that but but yeah. randy but randy you, you need a you need a fan cast so you're gonna have to work on that yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you i'll give you a, a a fan cast who who is the guy that um dang it look up look up the guy who who plays let me see what is his name on what show I know it's a TV actor. I know it is. Oh yes, it is. <laughs> Let's see. Is it is Ooh. it Denzel's kid? <laughs> it, is, it is. Dang it! What is his name? Actually, actually, that would name? he would work. He would work. That wouldn't for, be a bad. Uh, if, if that actually gonna, wouldn't be a bad casting for for Jay's father. His name um, is. You really, if you were the older version of like an old, like when he's actually Batman, I think that would work better. 
Because I, I mean, I feel like Jace has got to got to stick young, especially if Bruce is still around. His name is Eli Gorey. Eli Gore, and then with the extra E at the end. And he played Mad Dog on Riverdale. Oh, okay. I know who that is. I can see it. Wait, wasn't he on The Flash, like, just this season? I don't believe so. Yeah, he was he was Quincy in uh, Ballers, if you're a fan of HBO's Ballers. Oh, he's so, also so- the guy who played Muhammad Ali in... Um- in um, what do you call it in that movie? What Legends of Tomorrow? No, in One Night in Miami. In One Night in Miami. Virginia. Thank you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's my fan cast for for Jace, and now I also have my fan cast for Barry Allen, who is Damson Idris. Damson Idris, um, twenty nine years old. Yeah, but you know, I and. Gotta... and... That's fine. Yeah, Mike's got to Mike. Mike's got to prove. That's fine. Um, that's, I mean, that's that's the look that I finally, you know, he fits that's, what I want him to look like. So. That is a solid, you know, he's a solid dark skinned brother. You know, he's he's got that like youthful but like still mature mature look to him. You know, I can, I got it. I what yeah, what he, what he was on a, he was on that that John Singleton show no that fault. came out in like twenty eighteen. Yeah, he's yes, a star of Snowfall. You. Yes. All right. I That's got it. That's still going. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. You see? See what happens when we, we give you a little space, Randy, and we don't put pressure on you? You come through. Come so through. There Damps, we go. That's, that's my, my And, you know, the, those of you who know Snowfall will be like, you know, I could see it. He could be Barry Allen. You know what those two actors have in common? Neither of them are American. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Eli Eli Gorey is Canadian, and Damson Idris is African. I mean, is um, what do you call it? Is British. So uh, you know what that means? They both come from places with better healthcare systems. So yes, they do. They probably will be fine in the roles. They won't. They won't have any medical problems. I like it. <laughs> Listen, I knew I knew that Jace Fox would last a grand total of ten seconds, but uh, I just want to I just want to get some of the guys out there, get some money spent, uh, fill Randy up, make sure Randy gets left over with a few dollars that he's gonna. <laughs> I um I was not impressed. If this is the, well, no, I was impressed with him as Muhammad Ali, but um, yeah, you just have to uh, you gotta gotta find a solid picture of him. For for the uh, for our purposes, so <laughs> I will find plenty of pictures done for my purposes. <laughs> <laughs> These are different purposes, I think, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> but Tim Jace Fox was uh was how much did you put up one dollar for Jace Fox only to be I, outbid? I'm sorry, I put up my entire bankroll for Jace Fox. <laughs> <laughs> that is how much I am in. <laughs> Well, I do appreciate, I do appreciate the process and it's already the high bid by the black delegation. So, Hey, you could come out of here with, you could come out of here with two new characters, both in the DC universe, the next Batman, but this, Hey, Carlos is here. Perfect timing. Maybe Carlos wants to bid on one of these characters. Or maybe not. <laughs> Listen. Hey Carlos. Hey. So we are we have jumped into the nomination portion All of right. the evening. Uh, let me go ahead and let you know that the black delegation for an opening bid of two dollars and a fan casting of Damson Idris, who you might know from Snowfall. Okay. Uh, Barry Allen. Never heard of him. <laughs> really <laughs> uh, the white delegation. Uh, came through with their nomination. They bet their entire, they bid their entire bank roll <laughs> of one dollar for uh, Tim Jace Fox, aka the next Batman, uh, only to be quickly counterbid by the Black delegation <laughs> um, for Eli Gorey, who you might know from One Night in Miami playing Muhammad Ali. Okay, so that is the current high bid. Both high bids. Are two dollars. 
does the Latinx delegation want to put in bids for Barry Allen or Jace Fox? No. Uh, let me let me get um, fifty on Jace Fox <laughs> with a fan <laughs> cast of Wilmer Valderrama. Wilmer Valderrama. That is a good looking dude man. right there. Uh, I think he's, he's like I think he's like forty. Um, yeah, he's like forty. Yeah, but he's I'll good be looking. Soon, I can say it. He's an yeah. old man now. Yeah, but he looks younger than you. That is. <laughs> That is, like that, is, uh, that is factually correct. Um, <laughs> so I will go ahead and find a youthful looking version of Wilmer Valderrama. Uh, you know, this is, this is going to create ripple effects in the Fox family as uh, the black sheep of the black family. <laughs> like, the brown sheep. He's, he's the he's the Latino the Latino member of the Fox family. Who knows how that how that will play out? But Jace Fox, muscles. <sighs> Wilmer Valderrama, the next Batman potentially for fifty dollars. So that is the high bid. Uh, what about Barry Allen? Uh, I, I'll go. I'll go three dollars on Barry Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Allen slander on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Nobody likes the cop. I see it. No, I'm going to go $3 smiley emoji. $2 and has outbid me by $1 every time with a smiley emoji. So, <laughs> and uh, okay, let's see. Uh, fan cast for a Barry Allen. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say Edgar Ramirez. <laughs> I was a, I was waiting for something like this ammo. I figured we're gonna we're gonna just stick in the 50, 45, 50 plus at range. No, no. Uh, let's see. Let's Enrique see. Iglesias, and let's just make this fun. Barry Allen. Oh, what's the dude's name from um, Teen Wolf? Oh, Tyler, I know who you're talking Posey. about. The one who was in Tyler Posey. Uh, Tyler Posey. Yes, 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 yes. Tyler Posey. Michael J. Fox. Oh, you are old. <laughs> Tyler Posey. The whole damn series. AKA. AKA Latino Peter Parker. Um. <laughs> so Randy, uh, is is Barry Allen gonna sit at, at three dollars, or are we gonna are we gonna do four? Ooh. I'm 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 feeling froggy tonight, so we're gonna go for five. Oh, Tyler Uh-oh. Posey, five. Do I hear six? I got twelve hours. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, black, I can stream this along. Food. <laughs> for days I have, to, I have a very nice sleep carlos <laughs> so the, the black delegate delegation currently has the high bid but i will be sure to memorialize all of these bids um as i stay up way too late and this after this podcast comes out however th- this also means carlos you get the opportunity to nominate nominate a character who do you have in mind i'm going to nominate one Reed Richards. Just do it for zero so I can bid a dollar and play. Everyone's favorite uh, aerospace engineer. Engineer. <laughs> and I will, as a fan cast, uh, I'm going to, I like my reads old, um, older. So I'm going to go with uh, SI Morales as Reed Ooh, Richards. Ooh, and he's got the, he's already got the, 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 the hair. Mm-hmm. I thought for sure it was going to be Danny Trejo. <laughs> that old shit. Danny Trehold is like is like Joe Biden old. <laughs> I like it. I like Isaiah Morales. Latino Reed Richards. Just just say zero so I can bid it out. I want to play. Oh, oh no, I'm gonna start the bidding at four dollars. <laughs> See what I did there? See what I did? Nice. Four. Fantastico. <laughs> uh. Randy, are you counter bidding? Five. Five dollars. Four. Who Eight. is your was who is your fan cast? Randy, you should at least jump to 14. <laughs> my my fan cast is um dang it, what is that man's name? I know I have his face in my head right now. You Interest have out. access to Google, Randy. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to see. It was it was absolutely not Idris Elba. It was um the, yeah, the guy. Place. 
Dang it. I'm just, st- I'm just sticking in the Fast and the Furious universe. Uh, uh, ja Rule. Uh, <laughs> Tyrese. Ludacris. Um, really not. <laughs> John Cena. Because why not? I think everyone's been in the Fast anybody. and Furious. But... Let me see. Uh... I was in one. <laughs> I just go with the guy who was in the good place. Cheaty. People fan cast. I I will go with dang it, where is he at? Egan Michael Key. Will Smith. <laughs> um Willow Smith. Will Smith. No. Uh Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, um Andre Drummond. I'm just gonna get weird. Andre Drummond. <laughs> <laughs> Andre uh, Brother. <laughs> Let me see. Dang it. And he's been in a lot of stuff too. Rock like... Obama. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Motherfucking Fantastic Four. <laughs> the F doesn't stand for fantastic. <laughs> Blair Underwood. There we go. Blair Underwood. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, I have to I listen, I may be the wrong person to say that, but how the hell did it take you that long to get the Blair Underwood? I agree. I, how, you I, no, how do you not know who Blair Underwood is, Randy? His, his your your aunts are <laughs> just angry right now. His his face is so ubiquitous. I've seen him everywhere, and every time I always forget his name. <laughs> but yes, Blair Underwood. You know what the best the best role Blair Underwood ever had was as Russell Simmons in the movie Crush Groove. Really. Yes, like in th- this is a it's a it's a hip hop musical. No, I've, seen cr- I've seen yeah. Crush Group. I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, I'm just, was, just I know oh, for the listeners. This is sorry. for the listeners. Like, it's got no the Beastie Boys, Run DMC, the Fat Boys, LL Cool J, Curtis Blow, uh, Sheila E, and oh oh um, Rick Rubin playing himself. And who plays Russell Simmons? Blair Underwood, the least Russell Simmons. Did look- Russell Simmons uh, <laughs> produce Crush Group? Uh, yeah. Like- <laughs> that is the classic example of hmm, who would I cast to play me in a movie? Yeah, it's like me <laughs> casting Wilmer Valderrama to play <laughs> Carlos Freitas in the Carlos Freitas story. I don't, I don't know, Randy. Now. You went with you went with a hot Reed Richards, and you know that is that is definitely an interpretation. I don't, I don't see, I don't see Sue stepping out on Namor. You know, stepping out with Namor if if she's got uh, Reed at home. Well, I guess the other delegations better step up their no more thing casting, huh? I'm just sad we're not going to get the L. Cool J. Reed Richards that we all know. <laughs> because, because, listen, listen, there's no way that Sue's leaving with as moist as L. Cool J.'s lips. <laughs> Well, well, you 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 almost got the LL Cool J casting, but I couldn't hardly think of no black actors. <laughs> I think he was the one black guy we didn't name. LeBron. <laughs> Chauncey uh, Phillips. We just can't get weird. Like oh, uh, let's not get that weird, guys. I mean, we gotta <laughs> can't I, stay uh, can't stay current events. Like that is <laughs> as I as I was away while you guys were talking about Wonder Woman. What'd y'all say about Wonder Woman? Oh, we said that you're you yeah, know, yeah, you uh right. this is a yet another example of uh, a Latina coming to this country and being woefully underpaid uh, <laughs> for the job for the jobs that uh, you know American workers uh, like I I don't mean it's it's very it's very upsetting yeah that you <laughs> that you would take advantage of of Latina women in this fashion and I can I can steal Mike's thunder and say that you you earned an extra ten dollars for your depiction nice. so put put that money right on Reed Richards right now. <laughs> Do it, do it. Yes, yeah, so you, you, you got ten extra, bonus, <laughs> ten extra bonus dollars for the uh, for the fan art. That's cool. Thank you. But uh, no, my favorite my favorite uh, Blair Underwood uh, performance was when he was in Sex in the City um, as as one of the handful of black men that showed up on Sex in the City. Right. He was a a doctor who played who uh, who was a doctor for the Knicks who had sex with Miranda. Yes. And. Uh, and uh, I had a crush on Miranda, so it was kind of weird for me. Oh. <laughs> you were living vicariously through him. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yeah, I mean, I mean, she's going to sleep with a black guy. It's going to be Blair Underwood. That's that's great because I look like Blair Underwood. No, no I don't. No, I actually it's don't. who you cast to play you in the movie. 
<laughs> actually if I, I my 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 fan casting for myself is always Lorenz Tate so nice. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stick with that <laughs> until, until mine Lorenz. too <laughs> I'll say my my favorite Blair Underwood is Set It Off Blair Underwood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice, nice, nice. What's it gonna be? <laughs> nice, solid Blair Underwood. Multiple generations of that guy. Uh, she, she told you not to worry about. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into, I think that is all of our racial draft business for the week. So we can jump, in, unless there's more bidding. I mean, I, I, I will, I will uh, frustrate Carlos online <laughs> in the in discussion <laughs> by, by one-upping him there. I'm, I'm not going to waste all of the potential here, so we can handle that later. Okay. Guys, I have so many white actors. <laughs> <laughs> Not even funny, Randy. It took Randy like twenty minutes to, to come up with Blair Underwood. I'm <laughs> good. I'm, yeah. why, why didn't you come up with a white actor to play Batman? You just chose like the most anonymous white dude you could find. Right. <laughs> because he knew he was going to win. He was that, like, <laughs> that was that was the point. Was Batman is just all of us. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, I'm going to pick the most nondescript white guy that I can pick. I just wanted him to be British and, and look like, I don't know, something. And <laughs> I, did, I, wanted, I wanted a nondescript British guy with decent teeth. And that's all I look for. Well, that last part, that last part, made, you know, it kind of really restricted your search parameters. <laughs> I don't even remember his name. And he, he had nice teeth, though. <laughs> Well, we will stop the British slant. No, we won't. No, we won't. No, we won't. Hate crimes. Hate crimes. Still. We do. Boo. I, am, Boo to- I am Irish. Those are not my people. Yes. Well, uh, well we will not be approving. Not a British friendly podcast. Randy, we will, we will, uh, we will pass that Dule Hill fan casting, and we will ask you to later um, just revisit that with a better character. Um, Sorry, Dulé. Lander. <laughs> there, are no, there are no five. Wait, wait, hold on. So I, I got, I got, hold on. I, I got Damson Idris for for Barry Allen. Mm-hmm. I got um, solid, solid casting, solid casting. You like Gory as um as as Jace Fox? Yeah, a little questionable. You know, I would have gone a little older, but you know, it's fine. He looks a little. He looks a little on the young side. He well, really I, does. I, I, he really does look like he's like right out of school. I, I ended up tossing aside Dulé Hill. You just wanted to get in some extra Dulé Hill slander. I, I don't have a bad guy for anybody right now. I mean, I'm just, I'm just going, I was just going through the names because I have to memorialize this. You know, I just had to, just had to get my final, my final word on Dulé Hill before I clicked yeah, out on his, before I clicked the X, the X on his window because he was not the proper fan casting for any, any of the, the characters that have been named so far. I, I, I get the feeling that you, you, you have some sentiments about that casting. I don't know. You, you have some, some, some thoughts about Dulé Hill. He, he, uh, he, he crossed you wrong or something like that. I don't know. I mean, I, I, know I, feel like I, I feel like I got all my thoughts out on Dulé Hill. But <laughs> there might be yet a casting that is right for him. I just don't think that uh, he can fill out the, the Batman suit. Or the flash suit. That is a like, flash. Like the Batman suit. Uh, gentlemen, I'm going to leave the podcast in your capable hands. And Thank you. Let, let everyone know that wherever a nomination is made, that I can make a dollar bid, I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us, Gordy. And I mm-hmm. we will quickly run through the nerd news of the week. And um, hopefully... Hopefully, uh, you know, the hilarity will, won't, won't cease. We will start with, ironically, the Fantastic Four, which this, you know, this kind of falls in the realm of rumors. Um, it comes from a uh, fandom wire where um, the, the big story is that they are open racial casting for the Fantastic Four. Wow. Mm. Uh, we here at the Racial Draft obviously approve but uh, let's pretend that we don't um, <laughs> for the purpose of controversy. Uh, Randy, why is this a travesty? <laughs> I mean, 
it it is very um easy to kind of get into the 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 headspace of like just choosing actors for their demographic rather than for their acting skill and obviously i don't think that marvel will do that but i think that that is going to be a lot of what the complaint is whoever ends up uh uh lending their melanin to the role mm. interesting so like they're not casting for the demographic when they cast white people well, I mean, basically, that, that's, <laughs> that's what they're claiming. Like, I mean, there, there's a, it's very, um, anytime you get somebody who is brown and black, you know, has some more melanin than is achievable by white people, <laughs> then you get kind of like, oh, well, they're just hiring anybody or, oh, they're trying to win brownie points for, you know, identity politics and, you know, it, 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 I feel like they're not going to really be counted as a win, whoever they manage to get. All right. What do you think, Carlos? Why is this the worst thing that ever happened to comic book casting? <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, Santa Claus, Jesus Christ, and Human Torch. They just are white. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I... I hope that they mean it when they say that they're open to any mm -hmm. racial demographic. And I hope it doesn't just mean, you know, Latino and black, you know, I, why not give us, you know, an Asian man playing. I think it would be, I mean, I, this is something we talked about months ago. I think it would be cool if the entire fantastic four were Asian um, because there are not a lot of Asians in the MCU. Yeah. So at the same time, do you want to make your team of astronaut scientists Asian? Is that yeah. not in itself? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, I do because I want their mission to be successful. Yes. <laughs> Saying is that not itself a stereotype? <laughs> I mean, it's a stereotype. It's a stereotype. But then the mission's like you know a little questionable, and <laughs> and then they and then they end up you know one of them is was really smart. And it becomes really stretchy. There's nothing stereotypical about being stretchy. I'm trying right to call then. it now. Like, okay, I, I think like just hearing they're open, openly racially casting. It's like, all right, so Dev Patel is Reed Richards. Nice. And Anthony <laughs> Ramos is the human torch. Right. Um, and then do you have to make Sue also? I mean, probably, yeah. You know, but but again, ah, into the heights, that. into the heights taught taught us that you can cast a Latino and <laughs> <laughs> you can cast Latinos to play Latinos and still piss people off. Yes. Because right. as it turns out, we have colorism too. <laughs> Shockingly. And then and then as long as honestly, as long as uh as as, as long as what do you call it? Um as long as Ben Grimm is Jewish, he can be Jewish in anything else, you know, we're good to go. I'm told they have Jews just everywhere. So I that. was also <laughs> told the same thing. It's it's crazy. Yeah. You know, but, but yeah. But, but think about the, the John Krasinski uh, fan casters. Who, who will consider them? <laughs> who will cry? Who will cry for <laughs> Krasinski and Emily Blunt who already have the quiet place franchise <laughs> what tears will be shed like but the sad it's it's sad i mean we're joking about it but like if they cast uh fantastic four with no white people white people are gonna lose their shit yeah 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 and because i mean they're, they're they're first of all they're already like even though um, it, it just happens anyway. Anytime you get like any superhero ever, even if it's like we we got the Eternals getting a movie, and people were like, "Justice for Thanos." Who's, <laughs> who's going to who's going to ensure the purity of Thanos? This character we know and love. Like, please stop, stop with the foolishness. Yeah. They're, they're going to do it regardless. Yeah, and the, and the point that I always make, and you know. Forgive, forgive me, the people who've heard it before, is that if you're a fan of the character, a, an authentic fan of the character, and you are now less of a fan of the character because the character is not white, then you're probably not a fan of the character. You're a fan of whiteness. Yeah. You know? Um, now, I totally get that if you invert it, 
there are people who are not fans of the character because they're white. You know, there aren't people who are like, there are 10 million white characters and what makes this character so special? And one of the benefits of race bending the character is that it's something you don't see every day. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't see, the, even, I mean, we, we joked about it, but, you know, it's one thing to have a smart Asian character. It's another thing to have a smart Asian character who's also a superhero. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they made Reed Richards, you know, I, one of my fan castings for him was Steven Yeun, you know, which we talked about for Spider-Man, but you know, mm -hmm. he's a little bit older now. Like if Steven Yeun played Reed Richards, a lot of people like Reed, like Steven Yeun, a lot of people, you know, could see those qualities uh, imbued into a Reed Richards casting. And all of a sudden they're maybe a little bit more interested in what the Marvel version of Reed Richards is bringing to the table. As opposed to if they cast John Hamm to play Reed Richards, you know, <laughs> as much as I like John Hamm, mm. there are going to be a lot of people that are like, oh, another, you know, classical, classical white guy, you know, with that kind of like style uh, to play a classical white guy character who's going to show up in every situation and mansplain his way into, <laughs> yeah. you know, like this this is is this what which what we want to set up in marvel phase four you know the white man comes to rescue everybody <laughs> what what i what i definitely have considered here in terms of well i mean just generally in terms of its casting is that they say that the the casting is open racially but then they end up falling back on their usual go-to of well, the white guy was just the best one for the job, and they end up uh, still casting either majority or entirely white anyway. That's true, but I mean, I I would like to believe that 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 it's just not lip service. I would like to believe that they are seriously considering, and this and again, they it's not like they were saying we you know it's a quota where right. where we want to have we want to make sure that there's at least. Uh, one or two white people, and then the other two will be people of color. You right. know, um, if they're if they're open casting, the the one thing that this this article says is they definitely want uh, Sue and Johnny to be the same uh, the same race so that they can be actual siblings. Yeah, um, I mean, I I like I say I've I've, I've heard um, Kevin Feige like oh, I haven't heard, but I mean, seeing what he said about. Um, kind of his considerations in trying to help progress with like diversity and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, he's one of the people who I've actually heard actively say that we want to do like, you know, not put out like a company wide statement, mm -hmm. but like him personally speaking on wanting to do better in terms of serving uh, more representative stories. Right. And the last little bit, which I should have mentioned when I first said the story, is that the age range that they are looking for is uh, 20s to 30s. Mm. So uh, is that is that millennial or is that younger than even millennials um, for the Fantastic Four? Well, if they hit 30, it's going to be millennial. Right. Millennials okay. and Zoomers. Zoomers. Wow. Like we, Fantastic we, I, Four I'm on TikTok. I'm at the cusp of, of not being <laughs> a Zoomer myself. Well, I mean, I'm an old guy here. So, I mean, you, you wacky millennial slash zoomers and the industries you kill. It's only <laughs> right that a, that a millennial killed the multiverse. That's right. Well, well, definitely I'm the old. clickbait media thinks that millennials are perennially just 22. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's true. When you read a title, like a headline about millennials, it's like, how old do they think we are? <laughs> Uh, but let's transition to another story, uh, still in the Marvel Marvel vein. Actually, all these stories are in the Mar Marvel vein, except for one. Um, it involves Corey Stoll, who you might remember from uh, the original Ant-Man movie playing mm -hmm. Yellow Jacket. Uh, now, you would think if you had seen this week's, uh, this week's Loki that it was related to Loki, but no. It's in fact related to the to the rumor from our friends at Murphy's Multiverse that he will be returning in Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Will he be 
uh, coming through through time travel or would it be coming through through the quantum realm? Leave that up to you for speculation, guys. I, I legit do not remember how his character goes out in Ant Man. <laughs> he gives <laughs> he, he, he shrinks um, down into uh, uh, into quantum. the quantum yeah quantum realm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, he he gets like knocked into the 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 bug zapper thing. So I mean, he like I mean, he gets that too, but that's what that that sort of um, you know neutralizes him, and then. Uh, Ant Man puts the little thing on him to shrink him down into. Okay. Um, you know. Yeah, I mean, he he. We've already gotten the the connection of like time travel is achieved through moving through the quantum realm. So mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they you know tied it in. I mean, because they're already getting you know King the Conqueror. So obviously, some space yeah. and time is going to be bent there. Hey, you never know. Maybe he's the one who finds Kang, and uh, you know, brings Kang. Uh, you know, back through, uh, you know, comes through with Kang to to take over our world. But I liked Corey. St- I like Corey Stoll in general as an actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that he was, you know, he, he may have overplayed things just a little bit in in the first Ant Man movie. But overall, I think he was a, a solid. He was a solid villain, and that you know, I'm I'm okay with seeing him come back. He was one of those guys that I was like disappointed that his stay in the MCU was only one movie. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's a good actor. Yeah. So if he gets to come back and not get murdered, then, you know, maybe we can see him in future movies. Uh, the other, this isn't really news, but we'll talk about it. Um, what if the uh, last week we got the what if trailer and mm-hmm. there are some strong rumors that it will not be the only animated project. Oh, in the MCU. That's interesting. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, so I mean, the um, there was a tweet that went out from the um, head of development, no, not a tweet, this is, looks like Facebook, uh, from the uh, head of production development at Marvel Studios. Get ready for the first of many animation series. So people are speculating that that means there are gonna be more MCU animated series Pet Avengers. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, are they already doing pet uh, DC people though? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but 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 Marvel has the advantage of having like not just dogs. <laughs> like True. they're they're True. You know, they, they got some of everything. You know? Well, I have been advocating for a while now for an Iron Fist anime. So mm-hmm. I would I would be be hyped for an Iron Fist anime set in the MCU. Um, obviously, mean, I, the kid verse the kid versions of the projects like uh, what are they called like Power Pack and yeah. Devil Dinosaur and and Moon Girl, where you don't have to worry about the actors right. aging. Right. Um, you could do some animated stuff and, and 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 work that out. Hey, maybe you know maybe once the Young Avengers get too old. Um, they'll do a Young Avengers animated project. There's That's what movie. I was going to say is that the issue with the Young Avengers is, uh, you know, everyone who's every time there's an MCU project now, it's going to be like, oh, here come the Young Avengers. It's like, yeah, except that they haven't announced that. And those kids will all be 30 by the time right. Young Avengers comes around, unless it's a, a hidden project somewhere or unless it's an animated series. Right. Yeah. So. And and again, if they're if we're talking about animated series being set in the MCU, uh, that gives them a little bit of flexibility for it. Especially if we're talking about animated series being set in the multiverse. The multiverse, yeah. You know, then that opens up a lot of different possibilities. Maybe I mean, for all we know, some of these what if um, episodes could spin off into their own into their own thing. A lot of people were big fans of uh, of uh, Peggy Carter. What mm-hmm. if uh, Captain Carter? got her own animated series right right and that would that would be doubly a, a recompense for the show that got, that got canceled live action right exactly so fingers crossed that this rumor uh, ends up uh panning out to fruition i really I mean, like the style me. of that animation it's yeah. like rotoscope but not quite it's it's really interesting i yeah. agree I mean, they're like um uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I mean they they could do something with the New Warriors. 
They could do something with um, Squirrel Girl. Like, I mean, because both of like both uh, New Warriors and Squirrel Girl got their like show canceled. So maybe they could do something in an uh, animated version of that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot of potential there. And um, so let's see, there are two stories. One of them is, is uh, serious and one of them is silly. Which one do you think I'm going to lead with? The serious or the silly? Hmm. I think you'll lead with the silly. All right. Barbie <laughs> is a uh, filming will begin in 2022. It is going to star Margot Robbie as the uh, titular character Barbie and um, Greta Gerwig confirmed to direct. Very interesting. I was shocked. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see how much they're going to play into the fact of like, Barbie is like the every woman. She's had like every job and like how, I mean, how, how what, what exactly what angle are they going to go with Barbie as being the star? See, I always hope they go with the route of I don't remember you remember the show from a few decades ago called The Pretender about this genius who can uh, basically perform any role uh, after he um, spends like five minutes studying it. You know, <laughs> okay. I think that, I think that if you make Barbie the pretender, then it totally explains why she can be any profession because she's alpha alpha genius, and um, you know she. I I would I would be first in line <laughs> to pay for those tickets. Yes, do that. I'm <laughs> I'm more excited for this, although I mean, relatively, I'm I'm not excited, but I'm more <laughs> excited for this than I am for Lena Dunham's Polly Pocket movie. Yes, yes. So <laughs> an actual that, movie that's happening. That's an actual mm-hmm. yes, that's a project. Oh, and I no. and I and I already uh, over the week when I heard about this story, I've already de- decided who I want to play Ken that's um awesome. in the Barbie movie. And that would be uh Henry Golding. Henry Golding as Ken. Mm. Okay. Uh... Have you considered John Krasinski? <laughs> <laughs> If we can't get a white man to play Ken, <laughs> where are they going to go? That is a really good point. And uh, actually, I, I, on on that on that, I would actually not be mad if I mean because he's already going to be Buzz Lightyear. If they got Chris Evans to be Ken, I would not be mad at that. Fair, that's fair. But Chris Evans' asking price is probably much higher than Henry Golding still. True. Um, and Henry Gold, I mean, no, this is not an insult. Henry Golding, if you're listening, I am totally um, not uh, throwing shade your way, but I mean, he kind of looks like a Ken doll. Like, he's, <laughs> like, like, you can make a lot of money selling Henry Golding dolls, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, they. they oh, uh, wait, think- that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think a lot of money selling Marvel Robbie dolls too. I, I think his target audience would prefer that they be life size and anatomically prefer, correct. Right. I was going to say, I think they would prefer they be anatomically correct first. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that is uh, that was a silly story. Uh, you, you know me well, guys. And um, the more serious story is that box office, uh. Black Widow, back. The box office is back, baby. And not only back, but for the first time, Disney Plus said, bow. This is our premier access number. 80 million in the US, 60 million on Disney premier access for a grand total of, I believe, 215 million globally for the launch of Black Widow. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, it does make you question, would they have revealed a, the a premier access number if the non-premier access number was bigger? Probably not. I mean, I, I think I think that they want to like, I, I mean, obviously Marvel wants to, to build confidence in their brand. And, you know, in a in a in a pantomime, you you make that much money. I think that 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 that's something you know. There's something to be said for that uh, those numbers, and for it to be the first week, and for it to be you know not directly in theaters. True, but I do wonder if this is going to lead to 
you know, this, just this news is going to lead to more people just deciding, you know what, let me just do it. Let me just go ahead and order the Disney Plus. I mean, I, I could have made some plans with my family to, to go out to the theaters in the second weekend, but uh-huh. eh, let's just let's just drop the 30. It's being well reviewed. There's there's three of us. There's four of us in the family. It's just, you know, I could see I could definitely see the um, the, the the premier access uh, somewhat cannibalizing the um, later weekend box office. So we're, we're going to stay tuned on that story and see how it plays out. Now, one thing that I have read, they still have not uh, done a China release. They still have not even set a China release for Black Widow. Mm-hmm. So that could be a substantial amount of box office whenever they end up releasing in China. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I thought it was funny in, in one of our threads um, where I mentioned that I'll be buying it on Disney Plus uh, rather than going to the movies and someone else um, told me everything I needed to know about their family situation because they're like, mm-hmm. you would pay double to watch it on a smaller screen? It's like, no, sir, I'd pay half. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pay half to watch it and not have to miss parts when my kids mm-hmm. have to go to the bathroom. Right. So... Yeah. And I mean, not to get like a life threatening disease. Again, we are in a Pangea. So we don't wow. need to keep mm-hmm. like, like, you know, I mean, people are like, oh, well, we, you know, the sanctity of the movie experience, You're like, bruh, I'm trying not to die. <laughs> that's what I'm yeah. trying not to do. So no, that's true. We are still in a panorama. And, and I think that, uh, that that is true. I, I will admit to having gotten more lax since I've gotten vaxxed. So, yeah. but <laughs> I mean, I took my I took my daughter to see um, the 10 year anniversary of Scott Pilgrim, mm-hmm. but that wasn't a sellout. That wasn't mm-hmm. they were very socially distanced from, you know, the the seats. Um, and it was only in those Sony, those like special Sony uh, or Dolby um, mm-hmm. theaters that like the seat mm-hmm. was so big, you're basically six feet away from the next person anyway. <laughs> right, right. So it was it was as safe as could be. Um, yeah. But yeah, like 30 bucks so that I own it forever. And uh, I can make my own snacks and not pay yeah. another forty dollars for yeah. popcorn and soda. Right. Like, yeah, you can immediately run it back. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I could run it back while I'm watching it. Which, <laughs> like, like my my wife and I were starting to watch it today. We watched like the first fifteen minutes and then I had to leave. But um, there's a lot of mumbling in the first few minutes, and I was like, "You want to put on the subtitles? I can't do that in a the theater." You know? Yeah. What I mean? Yeah. Being, so, being and, and, uh, you know my wife's like oh that was a that, that that truck said shield i was like did it and like let's rewind and take a look. Uh-huh. yeah be, being able to customize your experience is is like so underrated that's like it it, it, it makes me feel like the the people who are are, are, are like complaining at, at like that we, um that that employers are that, that employees are opting for like remote work and oh you're you're missing the office experience of camaraderie like that, that, that's stupid <laughs> and, like, have you and watched this is a, everyone hates <laughs> it and this is as good a time as any to hype the fact that we will be doing a uh, racial draft network reaction uh review uh episode for black widow so nice. stay tuned for that um awesome. i haven't come up with a cool hashtag for it but you know i'll work it out i'll work it out black yeah. widow <laughs> the racial component is already there african-american widow um, <laughs> and and that i think is our final news story so we're gonna we're gonna end the show there unless you've got some final uh, trash talk for the coming week of the racial draft oh i you know um i like when people get questioned about their draft picks and i had to miss mine so did you have any questions for my wonder woman pick <laughs> in our background and oh i mean go ahead give us i mean you know you gave us a backstory right off right right off the gate which was which was nice um you know I, like you know we had our little jokes but and i and i also encouraged that if other people want to uh share whether it be uh cosplay or uh, fan art of of their interpretations of Latina Wonder Woman, um, I I guess I want to wait a little bit because we can we can keep revisiting it as more characters get introduced sure. into the fold. Um, you know, I imagine that between 
you know, black Superman, white Batman and Latino Wonder Woman. There, there's some interesting conversations in the Trinity and, um, you know, in the, the, the break room at the Hall of Justice. Um, <laughs> Yes. No. Uh, so, so yeah, with our Wonder Woman um, backstory, uh, I didn't want to paint anyone else into a corner mm -hmm. with the mascara and like setting it necessarily in Latin America. Um, and so I wanted to keep it this kind of ethereal place that could exist kind of mm -hmm. anywhere. Right. And mm -hmm. so then um, I decided to just make it that that she's a character who is basically the um incarnation of the bravery of all latin american women who have died fighting for a cause mm -hmm. so that way okay. she can be right all of it yeah and and uh yeah and and, and clearly the mascara sort of precedes uh precedes that but we right. we don't we don't really have a good sense of the timeline of you know exactly when diana came to be so right exactly mm -hmm. so yeah and so i didn't want to set it in a specific you know sh instead of world war ii it's the right cuban revolution or you know something like mm -hmm. that i just i just wanted it to be let's keep it kind of vague enough that so, you know if someone right. else drafts you know yara floor they can do their mm -hmm. their version that doesn't necessarily have to be tied to what we did with diana right. and remember yeah. we are still doing a supplemental draft this year so if you want to start fleshing out the rest of the Amazon, you know, the rest of the Amazons and make a uh, Hippolyta um, Latina, you want to make a uh, Steve Trevor Latino, you know, just, just kind of go all the way with it. Full telenovela, you know, like <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. Nubia. <laughs> Randy, do you have something to say about that? <laughs> Fan casting Anya Taylor Joy. <laughs> I, I, if you do that, I am going to steal Catwoman from you. I'm going, I'm going to find some other Latina. And uh, uh, Randy, uh, I don't want to have to point this out, but uh, Catwoman is scoring almost as many points as Jace Fox. So, uh, yeah, good. Oh, yes. Gotham. I've heard of Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Yeah, let me look at this. Just so you know, I'm not going to name them. I'm not going to name them. But out of the top 10 scores in DC, how many are based out of Gotham, would you guess? Uh, eight. I'd say six. Seven. <laughs> I was, I, that was literally going to be my second. I was like, it's, it's going to be somewhere in between that, isn't it? Because I've got, yeah. I was like, okay, we got to give him Superman. We've got to give him Wonder Woman. And then I figured Jonathan Kent. Yeah. And eight, and eight of the top 11. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Gotham we, Comics. Exactly. <laughs> so, we'll, it's going to be interesting to see how the second, second week goes <laughs> as, uh, as everybody places bids on Gotham characters. But, um, Guys, it's been great. We we flew through the topics, listeners. Hopefully, this is not your first show, but if it is, I apologize. However, I hope that you join us next week and continue uh, to follow us on all the various social medias. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Follow me, MTFIII, on all of those platforms. Um, go ahead, make your suggestions. If you're part of one of the delegations that have not uh, made their voices known and you'd like to be part of the racial draft hit us up hit me up and uh you know we could see about it we could see about uh, spreading spreading the wings of this racial draft uh uh spaceship as it were and and going to higher and higher places so carlos let them know where they can find you i'm at carlos freites jr on Twitter, uh, that's F R E Y T E S. You'll see me on the comments of every racial draft post. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, where can they find you? I am at Randy S0725, and my hashtag is superpowerless. And I, I, I hope that we can get um, some, uh, some, some Middle Eastern or North African 
delegates or some, you know, I, I hope that we can expand our, our family of, of, uh, of drafters. I would love to see more of y'all. And uh, yes, if you're, if you're black and you'd like to help Randy out with some of his fan casts, um, I'm sure he would really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yes, so, that he's, so that he's not struggling with Dulé Hill. I apologize, Dulé. <laughs> <words. laughs> <laughs> Which is not what we were looking for uh, here. Um, <laughs> Who would Dulé Hill be good? Be a good cast for though? I mean, uh, I mean I, there is a place for Dulé. There Hill. is Dulé yes, awesome. there is a place for Dulé Hill. He's just not uh, wearing a flash suit. Um, <laughs> but until next time, guys, all things are possible. <laughs>